tell me, tell me about August 31st. Where were you? What were, what were you doing before everything happened? So initially, actually I had just finished from lunch whenever I was just going to another call. And uh, heading to a call, got a report from dispatch that a trooper had been shot in Midland on I-20. And I was going northbound on the East Loop at that time. So knowing I wasn't too far away, I turned around on the loop, started heading southbound towards I-20. And dispatch says there's another gunshot victim at I-20 and the loop. So they give me the description, tell them I'm in the area. I find the victim there, been shot in the leg. I'm staying there, I'm trying to do what I can to help him. And then they say the shooter's back northbound on the loop. So I tell the ambulance, he's northbound on the loop, coming this way, get him out of here. And they did. Ambulance got the victim out. Myself and a couple other patrol officers were there facing south on the loop, waiting for him to pass by, but he never did. And then that's when victim after victim after victim started coming out. So we said, we can't hold this scene. We need to go. And we did. And from there, I was just responding to victim after victim after victim all over the east side of the city until somewhere along the way, someone got information that he was at the Synergy and that there were shots fired at the Synergy, from what I understand. So a lot of us went over there. When we found out he wasn't at the Synergy, I started leaving and another gunshot victim came out at 191 and Fodry. So I said, I'm close, I'm gonna go. So I tried to get out onto 191. It was packed with people leaving the Synergy. I turned around, went down to Dr. Emmett Headley, the street behind the Synergy, yeah. to go westbound there. Started driving, was checking my computer, looking at the screen for the details. Then two bullets came through my door. One hit me in the leg, one hit me in the hand. And it just happened so fast before I knew it. I mean, he had passed me. I don't know what happened after that. Looked, I stopped, got out, looked behind me. Officer Owens from Midland, standing there covered in blood. I ran back to help him. And the ambulance showed up to take him. And I knew from having, you know, we ran out of ambulances really fast. They were having patrol units transfer people to the hospital. After establishing that I was okay for the most part, I decided to try and drive myself to the hospital to not tie anybody up. And that's when my supervisor got on the radio and said, you're hit, no, stay put, I'm on my way. So he got there and, and applied the tourniquet to my leg and the ambulance that actually helped the victim that I was responding to was still close by they turned around and picked me up too and took me to the hospital. Do you remember anything after that? It was mass chaos in that hospital. I remember that. Mm -hmm. They they helped me as best they could. They you know, they put me in a room. It could have been a whole lot worse for me. It was a lot worse for so many other people that day. So I told them I'm fine do what you got to do for all these other people and you know just get to me when you can so i had a lot of family and support there to help me out in the meantime did you have to have surgery i did yeah i had one bullet lodged in my leg right here in the muscle it missed the bone but it was lodged in the muscle so they had to take that out the bullet that hit my hand split when it hit my door and it hit me twice and there's a, a bunch of peppered flakes in there still, but they had to cut the two big pieces out. Oh my God. I don't, I mean. So as soon as I started hitting shots or yeah. bullets fly through my yeah. door, my instant reaction was to duck over like that. Yeah. By the grace of God, it missed everything here and hit me on the right side oh when he was, God. I mean, I was a moving target. I was driving right. at the time that he shot and he still hit me twice. So it was, 
the worst thing that's ever happened, like the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I would think so. <laughs> but, like I said, I can't give God enough credit because I don't know how it missed this left side here. How many times did he hit your door? Did you, do you even know? Just, I don't, because from, after the two that hit me, I kept hearing shots. And I thought more bullets were hitting my door, but when they got my car and analyzed it, they didn't find any more. Hmm. So, from what I understand, him shooting me and Officer Owens alerted everybody else that was still at the Synergy. And I mean, he was moving fast too. Yeah. So we passed each other like this. And by the time he shot me, just seconds later, they stopped him at the Synergy. And it was still, that's the shots I was hearing. Right, right. And I, I thought he was still shooting at my car. It was that close. Did, when it happened, did it register like, oh, it's him? <laughs> or, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were so many things to think about at the same time right? when it, it finally happened because one of the pieces of infor information that we got was a mail truck. And what comes to your mind when you think of a mail truck? Not a van. Yeah, one of the square yeah. mail truck, the traditional ones. Nobody was looking for a van. I saw a white minivan coming out that I didn't register at all that it could have possibly been him. So when the bullet started hitting my door, I was like, oh no, oh my God, it's him. I thought I was done. And <laughs> I just, it's, it's been hard since then. I mean, yeah. the recovery took a long time. Yeah. You're back at work? Yeah. So, um, I mean, and it just, how are you? That, I, I feel like that's, that's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. I, like I said, it, it could have been a lot worse. I will not complain. Ever. What's changed for you? That, the way you, do, you approach your job, has, that, has it changed your perspective on what you do? I mean, for the most part, I was... I always tried to stay very vigilant in the first place. Yeah. That was just a situation that nobody could have predicted or was prepared for, was trained for, anything like that. A mobile active shooter, which is pretty much unheard of, and it was just one of those mass chaos situations, which is what he wanted, seemed like. And as far as how it's affected me, how I do my job now, I mean, yeah, I'm a little more hyper vigilant than I was it's a uh, you know the anxieties there and just things that I am still working on sure. but does it seem like you've, it's been a year no actually it's hard to believe that it's been a year already yeah. it's it's pretty crazy we've had a lot of people you know, in, in the days after, it's just, it's, it's crazy to, to meet you, to be able to talk to you, because we've had a lot of people in, in those days that were worried about our officers that were hurt, and, you know, sending, sending things to us, you mm -hmm. know, hey, if y'all, we know that y'all talk to police, and you know, pass this along to them, and um, we had a lot of people worried about you, and a lot of people sending and praying for you, and, um, so, I I was overwhelmed by the amount of support that I received and that all of us received. Yeah. I mean, obviously it was a team effort. I didn't sure. stop this guy. And that, that tore me up for a long time that he didn't, like, I didn't stop him. He got past me, but everyone behind me stopped him because they heard him coming because of me. Yes, I mean, it, it played a it played a big role. It in did, and I being had able to stop him. I had to realize that it took me a while, yeah. but I had to realize that that my part did have a big part to play because no telling what else would have happened if he hadn't, if he had just kept rolling past me and not shot. Who else would be injured or killed at that theater? So things that I had to realize and accept because I felt 
I didn't feel good about about the situation at all. And I had people, family, friends, the community, people I didn't even know, just calling, coming by my house, giving, yes. showing support. It was incredible. And it was definitely uplifting. And it's, I just can't thank everybody enough, everybody that showed support, everybody that, you know, that didn't even try to ask what happened. They just wanted to check on me and show love. And it, it was great. Yes, you, you do important work and there's still important work for you to do. And um, you've got a really great community that's got your back and is standing. Oh yeah, standing behind you. for sure. And a great department even at that. You've got a lot of, you work with a lot of really good men and women. Definitely. You know, that, that day was I mean, for everybody, but no more than our, than our officers, our first responders. There was a lot of chaos. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of noise within that hour. It was about an hour long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when, you, when you think of that day, is, is that one of the words that comes up? Or what, what do you think of when you think about that day? Or, or do you just try not to think about it? There's some times when I can't help but think about it. When I see a, a mail van, yeah. it, it replays. And it's just confusion and chaos all over again, just for, just for the moment. I mean, I handle it pretty well as far as being able to disregard it as it's the past, it's over. You survived, it could have been worse. Just thank God. And, you know, I'm a lot stronger because of it. Everybody that helped me with my my injuries and with my therapy, yeah. they were really awesome and and uh, have muscles in my legs that weren't there before so that's nice. Hey cool. Yeah so <laughs> all that that therapy that they had me doing it took a long time for my leg to stop giving out. It took about six months for it to be completely healed mm -hmm. and just during that time like I said, everybody's just been awesome. Is it? Do you still have moments where your leg feels weak, or that you have any issues with your hand? Not so much my leg. My my hand. This is the one that that gets. I've never had a broken bone in my life, but that bullet broke my my thumb. And they said that this is part of your thumb that just rarely ever breaks. Interesting. For most people. Is there but a scar? It, is it scarred at all? Yes. But that part of the bone that broke was, it's responsible for like 90% of your thumb movement. So there are scars and there are still those, those black spots where there's still bullet fragments. Do you look and at them ever? There's a piece, oh yeah. Because it still aches. Mm -hmm. And they said that would take a while, probably years to go away. But sometimes it still gets stiff and sometimes it pops and it hurts or it inflames, but I just have to take care of it get sore before it rains and yeah rains. actually my leg was the worst about that really yeah when I was going to therapy for my leg anytime the weather would get close to acting up my leg would start hurting pretty bad it's like it's so weird how that happens isn't it mm -hmm. it's yeah I um it, by no means the same thing but I stabbed myself here and say, same thing gets a tore I and mean, break a bone I tore ligaments and severed a few arteries and it's um it, it i can't describe the ache it's it's strange yeah I, I can't grip things <laughs> like any like pill bottles mm -hmm. such, or like a, a big gulp cup trying mm -hmm. to like if you grab it from the top i can't grab it from the top it's not the same thing but i i i understand that it's, it's a weird sensation it is injure something right here is yeah. it is it a strange reminder like when you when you see the fragments in your hand or your leg gets achy mm -hmm. it, does that take you back to then sometimes because the scar on my leg is is pretty prominent and you know when i'm sitting there in shorts or something and just staring at it sometimes you know i can't help but think about it because all that wasn't there before all this wasn't there before and 
it's just, it is very strange how a matter of uh, seconds can change you forever. Something, you can take something away or give you something you didn't have before and it's there for the rest of your life. Did this experience give you something that you didn't have before? Are you carrying something different? Yes. And I'll say that uh, doing police work, you see almost nothing but the bad constantly. It's a daily thing of seeing nothing but the horrible things that a lot of people do to each other. Yeah. And that was day after day after day for me and for my colleagues. It's just horrible things that we see out on the streets every day. We don't interact with a lot of people on a positive note. So after this happened, I started seeing a lot of the kindness and the good and the love that people, they do have, and they did show. And that, that boost of positivity was something personally that I needed to see just the goodness that's there. There is good out there. Yeah, and I, I saw a lot of it in a great abundance, a lot of goodness. And I really needed to, and I'd, that's something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. It, just, there are a lot of good people, and there is a lot of goodness. And in a bad situation, people will rise up and help each other. And it's amazing. You know, it, for as dark and bad as that day was, it was mm -hmm. a bad day, um, and a dark day, but there's been... Um, a lot of bright spots since then, and a lot of people, you know, coming together to really you know, show our department how appreciative they are of the work mm -hmm. that you do. And I, I think that's a bit, I mean, at least that I've been able to notice. I hope that you can see that too, even oh, yeah. still now. Even yeah. Now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do get people all the time that like to come up and just give gifts to the officers, yeah. and it, it's amazing. Does that? What um, what does that mean to y'all? You have to see that little boost. I, I mean, especially, you know, in the last year, it has been a heavy year. Just in take take the mass shooting out of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's been a strange year. Yeah. It's been a heavy year. You know, Definitely. A lot of eyes are on just police departments in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's been really encouraging to see that that's not so much the story here, people. Mm -hmm. really do care about y'all. They're showing that support. Yeah, and I, I honestly, I love to see it. I love, well, I understand why people don't sometimes, but there are a lot of people that do. And we see it every day, yeah. especially since then. Do you notice those things more or try to find the good? Yes. Yes, that's one point that I've made it is making it a point to find the good, to see the good in people is, you know, somebody could just really be having a bad day and you could be the only person that day that, that helps them. And whether they show it or not, they're, they're probably going to appreciate how you help them out of their bad mood. And it's not something that you have to see, just have faith that you at least tried. You know, things that I have to tell myself. That, I think we all have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it, get, it gets hard sometimes. Not nearly as much as it used to. Yeah. But with all the negative light now, it just, it gets hard sometimes to see if you actually are helping somebody or not. You're making a difference. <laughs> I don't have to, I mean, that doesn't mean, you don't need to hear that from me, um, but, you know, when, I'm just thinking of, you know, the, the things that people would, you know, send us or take photos of that they dropped off here, you know, for the, for the police department, and, you know, they, they use words like, 
courageous, mm -hmm. brave, you, you hero. You hear all of these words to describe the men and women that serve on this department. Um, you, when you hear those words and the work that was done that day, the work that you did that day, do you, do you see it like that, or do you? How do you see that? Honestly, I see it as the entire thing was an incredible team effort. Everybody I know that, that responded, that went out there, that tried to help in some way, every single one of them, any one of them could have been hurt or killed. But it's something like that doesn't make, it doesn't make us turn and run. I mean, we have, there's always that thought, that idea that I could die today. Somebody might try to kill me today, but it's not something that we can let defeat us. We still have a job to do. It's up to us to, yeah. to help people and to try and stop whoever's hurting people. How many scenes did you go to before you went to Synergy? Do you even know? Do you, can you even put a number on it? You, it, it, it seems like you, you stopped a lot of places and saw. Off the top of my head, I went to, I believe, at least five. One, you know, just kind of back to back, doing what I could at the time, right. and then going to the next. But from what I hear, the whole thing didn't take long at all. For from the time from the from the time that he shot the trooper on I twenty to the time where he was stopped at Synergy, I don't know how long it took, but I, I was told I believe it only took a few minutes, really? like fifteen, fifteen maybe twenty minutes that we were trying to find him or chasing information. Chasing him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we we have all the the radio from that day, um, and it just you know we will listen to some of it and stop it. And like, okay, where are we in the timeline of every? It was it, for lack of a better word, you're like trying to hunt down someone, and there's so much information mm -hmm. coming from everywhere, and trying to you know how how did you try to? you know, stay focused on the task at hand and say, okay, now where do we go? Or how can we get it in front of this person when you didn't know what you were looking for? Exactly. It's uh, it's one of those things where you have to force yourself, yourself to stay calm and just really think, think before you act. I mean, it's, we were getting a bunch of bad information from a lot of people who thought it was good information and it's, we're all trying to process it, yeah. and like I said, the mass chaos, it just didn't work out. Um, I don't know, see, at one point, we were looking for two or three different cars. Yes. Two or three different people. Yes. When there was only one. <laughs> and then, I, I don't know how the information came about as far as he was at the Synergy, but that's that's one of those things that we followed up on, and that's where he was heading. He wasn't there yet, yeah. but he was heading there. Yeah. Thank goodness you got over there. Yeah. I still can't. You tried to drive yourself to the hospital after you had been shot, like in the leg, and usually you kind of need that to drive. I just you were gonna drive yourself to the hospital. Yeah. I mean. I knew I needed to go, but I wasn't going to tie up an ambulance. Like I said, there yeah. was a lot of people that yeah. needed it a lot more. Once I established that nothing vital was hit, it was like a big weight off my shoulders just instantly. It all happened in a matter of seconds. Did you think, okay, well, let me, you know, at least try to get it to stop bleeding? Were you bleeding a lot? I, I mean, there, you've got some important arteries that are running up and all over. I was, but honestly, my first thought wasn't myself because I knew that Owen's behind me had, he, was he was hurt. Yeah. I didn't know how bad, but I turned around and he's covered in blood. So I tried running. I uh, Could you? tried to pull out, 
I hobbled as fast as I could. I didn't, I didn't realize how, how bad it was. I, I felt the blood running down my leg, but it's nothing that I really paid attention to. I felt it filling up my boot, but I tried grabbing my gun at the same time because I didn't know where the suspect was and I couldn't grip it. I, I was holding onto it with, like this with my oh, fingers. I couldn't right, move my thumb. Right. So I switched to the other hand. It, it was just, you know, once it, I got to him and he was just, I mean, I don't know. The, Is he conscious? The thought, yeah, he was standing there. And he's, he's just in really, really bad shape. I mean, the thought of seeing him like that will never leave me. But somebody was there helping him already, and they told me to run and get a car. So I ran back to got the first, tried to get the first car I could find. But then that's when the ambulance was showing up to pick him up. And did it register once, that you were shot? Yes. I felt it. You knew. I, yeah. Like you knew, oh, that's a bullet. Yeah, I felt it hit me, and it felt felt like a hammer. Yeah. In both spots. Man, I I'm just I don't know what to say. I'm I'm often not speechless, and um, that's how I am right now. Um, is it because I'm awkward? You're not awkward. I think so. I, I can be pretty awkward no, most of the time. You're not awkward. No, no. It's just, how do you talk about somebody's worst day? What do you say? You know? This is the first time I've talked to anybody about it. Because like, a, like I said, for a long time I felt a lot of shame for not stopping him when I felt like it was my job, my responsibility to stop him, but instead he got past me. Don't feel shit. I, no, you should not feel that way. That's something that I overcame because I did have to watch, I had to watch my video and it showed otherwise. It showed that I had no, like I'm surprised I even had time to duck. That's how fast it went. And that, you, being in that position helped your your colleagues right. stop him. Exactly. And if you weren't there, mm -hmm. you know, and I know you've you've thought I know you've gotten there, but yeah, I you you did important work. Well thank you. Don't ever um, you don't need a reporter telling you don't never feel shame about what you do ever again. <laughs> No. Yeah. It was hard. You know, from what I hear, a lot of people that go through similar situations struggle with things. You know, what should I have done better? What could I have done? It's just how you process. That's, that's your, your, your way of processing and accepting what did I do? What just happened? Right. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a defense mechanism. A lot of people. Yeah. But I'm glad that you are, you are back at work. Oh yeah. You're recovered. Yeah, I'm rocking it up here. Yes. Man. Yes. There's there's been some good some good things. You know, mm -hmm. it's he he took you down for a minute, <laughs> but down never out. Right. That's what I always I always try to think in a in situation. Thank you for being willing to not only share your story but do it on camera, mic'd up. I, I know a lot of this will touch a lot of people, and it will. You know what we want to do is show that the there was a lot of, and I've said this over and over, a lot of really important work that happened that day. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it more intimately and knows it better than the men and women who helped. You know they always say if something bad happens, look for the helpers. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do in this special be able to share that and I know a lot of people will and we'd all do it again in a heartbeat I know you would that's that's what makes you and every other person that works here special this is a special place and I hope you see it that way <laughs> yeah I certainly do is there anything else you want to say um no I can't think of anything
Well, thank you. It was good meeting you. Oh, good meeting y'all too. It's definitely a pleasure. I have one I hope question. So. Yes. Uh, how important was it, like having your family after this event, like family and friends, and just there's yeah. Because I see you're married, like you have kids. Mm -hmm. Like, how was it like seeing them after the event, just having them with you along the way? That was the most important thing to me at that point because just getting to lay eyes on your wife with yeah kids and just <sighs> yeah that because i know as soon as it started happening as soon as there was one victim after another i called her and said there's somebody driving around shooting everybody don't leave the house and after that after I got shot, my sergeant had to call her and say, your husband's been shot. And my kids were there and her family was there. I mean, by then, by that time, word had spread to everybody. Yeah. And it's, it just kind of shocked everybody. And you know, my kids couldn't go to the hospital and see me, but you know, she did. How good did it feel to just lay eyes on someone you love, your it, wife? Yeah, it was it was the best thing that could, that could have happened for me at that moment. Because I mean, love and support in any situation is is definitely the the thing that you need the most. And after that, there was family that I haven't talked to in decades that showed up at the hospital to see me. Hey. Yeah friends that I hadn't talked to in forever somehow found out and and got in touch with me and, and like I said it was it was not to ask what happened it was just to show me love and support and that's what you know that exactly. that's what really rocked my world and and got me feeling a lot better a lot faster so it, it was amazing that, I love that it's exactly what you needed yeah yeah, because that, <laughs> that whole situation, it, it could have devastated and destroyed me, but it didn't. Don't give him that pleasure. No, absolutely not. I don't want to glorify him in anything. I don't want this to be his legacy. Because this is, I mean, this is just us as a community, legitimately rising up as a community and overcoming something that he tried to do. And we're all here to talk about it, and he's not. I think you're a good example of rising up. Yeah. And better than you were before. Stronger. Oh, for sure. I love that. Well, thank you again. Anything else, my ghost? No? Okay. Anything you want to add? Yeah, is there anything, anything else you, you want to say? say? Anything you want to say? Yeah, any, you know, anything. What would you tell? What would you tell someone at home that's sitting and watching, and and they just heard your story? What would you tell that person? You know, it's it's been a rough year for everybody. What would you tell them? You know, it has been a rough year for everybody, but you know, I, no matter what anybody says about me or the police in general, it's just I have no reason to not love anybody. I love my family. I love everybody in this world treat everybody with respect some people have that mindset that respect is earned I disagree I think you should treat everybody with respect and I don't know see this is where I start getting awkward with stuff because I have to think about it You're not awkward. it's like I would You're like to, I would like to say good good things about people but I just don't know like a bunch of stuff tries to come out at once that's okay that's literally like I have word vomit and I speak for a living and you know <laughs> yeah um, and honestly I mean all the little kids like I love all the, the gifts that all the little kids gave me they're so cute and so adorable. And my daughter's class, you know, from schools all over the, the city and, and kids from church, 
drawing me pictures, giving me little things that they made. I mean, I still have all of them, you know, and yeah, it is very sweet. And just all the love and support that the community showed. I can't, like, I'll be grateful forever for everything that they did to help me and my family through that time that I was healing. I think everybody will be very happy to see you doing good. Yeah. I have one okay. question. Where does your selflessness come from? Because you chose a profession where you're, you know, yeah. going to help people. And you mentioned you didn't want to take an ambulance away from anyone. So where does that come from? I was, it's, for me, it's a kind of like a natural response to just make sure everybody else is okay before me. I don't know where it comes from, honestly. And anytime anybody's ever ever heard or going through something around me, I'm just, I'm, it just leaves the the any kind of selfishness. I'm not trying to make myself sound you know, I know good that. but I don't know I don't know how to explain it it's that's just you that's just you just have a need to just want to help when you see it yeah I mean exactly it's just something that that fires up when I see somebody needing help and it just it's I just go You're doing exactly what you were made to do. Yeah, what a perfect job. Yeah. Yeah, I know the the Lord uses people in very mysterious ways. I never thought that I would be a cop. Really? You didn't think that's what you would do? Well, until like I started getting inspired to be a cop when I was nine years old. Uh huh. Because of a video game. Oh, that's good. From there. That's when I started just more and more and more over the years, you know, seeing police and seeing what they do and and uh, just wanting to be part of that. And finally, you know, thanks to, you know, my wife and my family, all the encouragement that I had, I joined the police academy and it's what? it's been smooth and like it it was the smooth like it was meant to be the smoothest process i ever went through in my entire life because i legitimately feel like i was meant to be here and do this and from there it's just you know i've been doing what i was inspired to do since i was nine years old that's cool yeah how long have you been on the force it's been eight and a half years 